Well, hello, everybody. It is the Dennis and Andy Show with your movie review and a few. Haven't used that in a while. Um, last night, we went and saw Argyle, and it was not a documentary about how to make sweaters or socks, but I wasn't disappointed. Um, so we will do the non-spoiler review up front, six, seven minutes. Then we show the graphic like you just saw. And then we dive into spoilers. So if you don't want to hear them, you can bow out and uh, nothing will be ruined. Of course, like, subscribe and share. Let's dive into it. Dennis, what is Argyle about? Because I was totally wrong going into it, thinking sweaters. Yeah, this is not about knitting or, or crocheting. Mm. This is about a reclusive author who writes espionage novels about a secret agent and this global spy syndicate. But realizes the plot of the new book she's writing starts to mirror real world events in real time and she's dead in the center of it wow and this is directed by matthew vaughn uh you'll know his name i'm pretty sure matthew vaughn did the original kick-ass uh he did. And few of the kingsmen uh matthew vaughn is one of those directors that definitely has a signature so some directors it's not that they fade into the background, but you go see a movie and you could watch one movie by the same director or watch like five movies by the same director and you wouldn't cue in on things, you know. Uh, Matthew Vaughn definitely has a fingerprint when he directs. You could tell it was a Matthew Vaughn movie. Uh, Sam Rockwell is in it. Bryce Dallas Howard plays the uh, elusive uh, author uh ellie she's she's good i like bryce dallas howard um i love however sam rockwell he is yeah. a guy he is one of those actors that when you hear his name it's nine times out of ten it's quality it's a great acting job and he can just play so many different types of characters uh of course henry cavill is in it dennis's heartthrob uh, he just wishes he would play Iron Man in the uh, Silver Centurion armor. I think if that happened, Dennis would <gasps> faint. That that would be an awesome setup. I mean, my favorite Iron Man armor. Yeah, guys, the um, this you know the movie trailer is what caught us, and, and as you yeah. can tell by the title, we were all roped into this. I, I will be seeing it again because my wife and daughter couldn't attend yesterday. So I will be going to go see it again with them. Um, you know, the trailer captivated all of us. It just looked great from uh, from all around. Jason Fuchs is the writer of this one. And, you know, he starts off, it, it, it's, it starts off just great. You know, it starts off, you got Henry who plays Argyle. You know, he and John Cena, they're the two agents they go through it. It was captivating. It was a fun opening. Boy, did this movie take off in the right direction from the start. Great opening. And then we find out it's all in her mind. But I did like what Bryce Dallas Howard did because she's got writer's block. She's got to come up with an ending. Right. And it's a really awesome process that you get to see her go through as Henry disappears and you see all the letters from her pages fall off. Again, it was a nice intro. It, it, it was a very nice opening. Uh, John Cena plays actually the tech nerd, which is kind of funny. He's not in it much. Um, I will say, did you catch? I don't know if John Cena is older than Henry Cavill. I'm going to assume he is because he hell of a lot looked a lot older. I was like, holy crap. I thought they were around the same age. A um, yeah. little side note. Uh, yeah, I mean, she, like Dennis said, the movie starts off really fast paced, pulls you in. You realize that she's the writer. She's on her fifth book as of uh, the fourth one came out. Now she's finishing up the fifth one. She runs it past her mom played by Catherine O'Hare. And, um, you know, her mom's like, I don't know. You need to add more to it. Uh, all the performances were really good, really, really strong and solid. And uh, there's there's not a lot we can really talk about. Uh, yeah, I, without... I would say Catherine O'Hara, hers is probably the weakest. And it isn't her fault 
They just no. didn't give her a lot to do. You'll see her at the beginning. You get little bits and pieces, and you see her at the end. Um, I loved Henry Cavill uh, as Argyle. He he had that James Bond debonair, but super muscular with I'll call it the Zoolander haircut. I I did love his uh, haircut. Uh, very stylized. Sam Rockwell had it for a while with like frosted tips on there in a scene. Sam Rockwell stole this movie, and we will really get into it in the spoiler section. There were spots, though, that this movie drug on and, to me, kind of went off the rails. But Sam helped hold everything together. Right. So he so, was the shining star in this. I, yeah, and uh, the big uh, bad guy was played by uh, Walter White. Wasn't that his name in Breaking Bad? It was. It Walter was. White himself, Brian Cranston, and uh, he was good. Uh, and we'll delve in. I mean, he was good. He did a fine performance. Um, there's definitely spoiler stuff we'll talk about with him. Like Dennis said, though, this movie, where I think this movie kind of fails in a way, as much as fun as it was, is they would do a twist and you're like, oh, that's cool. Then they would do another twist. You're like, oh, that's cool. And then you're thinking it's going to end, but they do another twist and you're like, oh, okay. And then you yeah. think it's going to end. And then they do another twist. So like Dennis said, this movie's two hours and 20 minutes long. And unfortunately, it felt like it. it That's a problem. Not too uh, often Dennis that you'll hear me say that, but it was like 20 minutes too long. Yeah. And the CG in this was ridiculously bad. There oh, was yes. that the practical stuff held up, but... Oh my God, they they needed more money for the budget for the. the CG. Well, see, and that's weird because like the CG stuff that really struck stuck out to me as awful was in the beginning with Henry Cavill, which is technically not real because it's in the novel. You know what I mean? So I'm wondering, did they do it on purpose? I, I, don't, I know. don't know. I don't know if they did. If they did, they shouldn't have because no. You know, and we'll get into this in the spoiler section heavily. But um, yeah, it there were spots where it actually pulled me out of the movie. And I was like, oh. And, you know, but all in all, the question is, did you have a good time? Was it worth a watch? I had fun. I laughed out loud a few times. There were some oh, yeah. slapping moments. I went, wow, really? And I was like, why? And, and there are other moments I was just, moments i was just laughing so all in all we'll give it the grade now and then we'll, we'll, we'll delve into it i think it's my turn anyway to go first um i'm giving this one a 6.0 it was enjoyable i thought it was fun um there were just a lot of moments that just pulled me out i actually thought the trailer was better than the final product which sucks i i like it to go the other way but um I'm going to be seeing it again. I'll see if my opinion changes when I see it with my family. But with that being said, still worth a watch. It was fun. We just needed more Henry Cavill. Definitely needed more Henry. Yeah, uh, I'm giving it. I'm actually we're 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 in line. I'm giving it a six point five. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, it was fast paced, but then at times it, it really drug and slowed down. And you could have easily cut 20 minutes out of it and kept the same twists, I think, and stuff. And honestly, some of the twists, I mean, you probably could have done without. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so we'll talk about it in the spoiler twists. section. Uh, we always do the review. Let's just see. IMDb has a 6.0 out of 10. So we're kind of in line there. And Rotten to Oh, holy crap. Rotten Tomatoes. Well, it's all critics. Uh, audience members, they've got a lot of ratings, but they're not showing it. Um, the tomato meter is at 35%. The critics hate this movie. Wow. That. Wow. That is, it is, guys, I'm telling you, while there's some things like the CG cat and stuff that drove me nuts, this is not a 35% movie. I liked it. No, 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 no. I think our I, I really think we do a good job because we're not coming from it from the standpoint as critics with their agendas 
and not even agendas like, you know, political crap, just they're critics. So yeah. everything has to be under the microscope. Uh, that's where I think we fall into the category of the normal guys is what we should call ourselves when it comes to movie reviews. So I think a six, 6.5 is not bad. I mean, go check it out on the big screen, catch a matinee. Um, yeah. You'll laugh. And then there are times you'll just go, oh, uh, right. the cat did crack me up, though, before we get to the spoiler stuff. Um, there were definitely scenes in it. I was like, oh, that's how Dennis treats uh, his daughter's cat. Oh, yeah. So yeah. we'll get into that. All right. In three, two, one, spoiler section of the movie. By the way, Dua Lipa, Dua Lipa, however you say it, was in the movie. I didn't realize that was her in the gold dress. Uh, just in the beginning, very small role. Um, yeah. So, what's that? Yeah, she was. And yeah. uh, well, come uh, on. okay, you didn't know that was her though either, right? Yeah, yeah. And when you saw her on screen, played Kira. And she wasn't in the movie very much. And I thought when we saw her die at the beginning, because, you know, she was the, the uh, uh, you know, the fictional girl. Again, this is going to be one of the twists and stuff that was in there. But anyway. Um, who, wait, who was the actress that played her? Uh, Ariana Dubois. Yeah, see, that doesn't ring a bell. Why? Do you know that name? Yeah, well, when you looked at her, I mean, when you saw her die right away. <laughs> You're like, oh, she was the girl from, you know, Wish and uh, Once Upon a whatever. But so you recognize her as soon as you see her on the screen. You're like, oh, OK. Well, I didn't. I didn't oh. recognize Dua. I didn't recognize Dua Lipa. Apparently, Dennis is really into that music. So he did. Yeah. Oh, I knew she was in it. Or he uh, followed her Instagram to look at that booty. Yeah, so now we're going to really delve in, guys. Guys, are, there's I, I, I can't complain too much in the front because anything we're going to complain about is really going to delve into some of the spoilers. But I'm telling you right now, that CG cat, man, there were some good spots because I'll bet there were two or three spots where they actually had the cat in the film. Oh, I believe the there's a real cat. CG. No, no. Yeah, Oh, no, there is two or three spots where you can tell it's a real cat. Oh, yeah. The other times, it is CG'd in across the board, and that drove me absolutely crazy. Here's um, some of the big problems. So some of the problems I had with the movie are, you know, we see these action movies, and we see action comedies, you know, Lethal Weapon, stuff like that, right? And the action isn't so over the top that you're like, oh my God, this is like a superhero movie because it's such BS, right? Well, in this movie, in the in the Henry Cavill world, we'll call it the novel world, it's great for the action to be over the top because it, she's writing a novel. But some of the action, and yes, it's Matthew Vaughn, and it is kind of a signature with him in his movies, but some of the action in this that Sam Rockwell and uh, uh, Bryce Dallas Howard were doing I'm just like, you got you you got to be kidding me, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't care how well-trained Sam Rockwell is as uh, an agent. Because once again, we've all seen these, these special agents that are just, you know, so highly trained in everything. And that's fine. But some of the choreography for the fights just pulled me out of it. Like, that's just too over the top. There was. That is exactly the, uh, the the point. Everything was so over the top with this. And there there were moments like the train. You know, I thought those were fun scenes. I thought they were enjoyable. Um, Bullet Train did it better. And I actually oh, sure. thought they, they were choreographed better in, in Bullet Train. This wasn't bad. But the one that the one fight scene that just I it, it actually pissed me off. There, there's a scene at uh, towards the end where they're coming down the hallway. All the bad guys are lining up. Feels a lot like Star Wars with with all the rebels when Vader's capturing Princess Leia's trip ship and they're all lined up in there. All of a sudden, the smoke canisters come out and it's all of this color. It's meant to be choreographed. It's meant for visual color, and it is. But the fight scene was just so laughably bad. It was just like. 
it was hard to watch and I couldn't see anything because it was so filled with smoke. I would have rather had lost the smoke and I get you're doing it for color effects and stuff. But man, I wanted to see the actual fight scenes. That was number one. And then the one that really killed me, it was a cute idea. Oh, wait, let me, let me opine on that. I agree. The smoke, you know, Bryce Dallas Howard, Sam Rockwell, Come out of this weapons room, like Dennis said, the hall's filled with guards, and they just start throwing out smoke canisters. The first one's purple. Then there's then there's yellow gold smoke. And then there's like blue smoke. And when we're saying that the gunplay that these guys were doing, and they had gas masks on, of course, and the necessary stuff so they could see through the smoke, heat vision, blah, blah, blah. But the choreographing that they did for these for these two actors shooting the bad guys was we know fight scenes are choreographed but i mean this was just over the top it was dancing with guns and that's just like if it was the novel part of it with henry cavill you'd be like okay but this was like the real world stuff and you're just like are you kidding me so yeah that that was uh that was one that even just uh, just annoyed me you know you could have went with the typical smoke of you know, it's a smoke bomb. It's white or gray, whatever, you know, and done it much better to keep a serious tone. To, yeah. I actually thought, and I almost said it to you, I go, is this the point where the movie jumped the shark? Yes. Yes, it was. And, <laughs> and that is exactly what I thought at that point. Because at that point, I'm in my chair. I had to use the restroom a, a couple of times yesterday. So I remember sitting down when the smoke started coming in. I remember leaning back in my chair and went, oh, yeah, they, they've lost me now. I mean, they they check out. So, uh, I mean, again, this movie started great and went down. But the one that killed me, and again, it was the, the, the special effects, the CG, Bryce Dallas Howard. Ellie has to, she puts knives down and steps on them and uses them as ice skates, which they allude to throughout a couple of times. Right. That she can skate, skater, yeah. So they explain it and stuff, but she does it on an oil slick. And the scene was so not only unbelievably bad, it was just unbelievable, period. And right. She had a stand-in stunt double, which was obvious. And then the whole parts of it were just completely CG'd and actually looked like something from Nickelodeon or Nick at Night. And I was just like, wow, it was just awful. Just, just yeah, awful. And again, it, this is at the end of the movie. If and the then, first scene didn't jump it, jump the shark with the smoke bombs and stuff, this one definitely did. They're in a room, huge room, two people, you know, Sam Rockwell, Dallas, Dallas or Bryce Dallas Howard fighting a lot of bad guys, at least 10 of them. And they can't start, they can't keep shooting because oil is now spilling out crude oil from these pipes and stuff, which is funny because they're like, you can't shoot anymore because a spark could light that stuff, whatever. But then my thought is, well, the reason that the stuff is spilling out is because they were originally in a gun battle and all these pipes got hit exactly, and oil spilled out. So I'm like, well, if the pipe gets hit, that's going to create, I guess, a spark of what's inside. So that didn't make sense. And then, like Dennis said, they can't shoot anymore. So, like, these nine bad guys, whatever, pull out their knives and start gingerly walking through the oil-soaked floor because it's so slippery. She makes ice skates by basically popping knives on the bottom of her shoes, which drove me nuts. And then, like Dennis said, you know, you can tell it's a professional skater skating around. And then, you know, there's some CG stuff, too. But what does she end up finally doing to take out a lot of the bad guys? She jacks a gun out of this dude's chest, you know, a, a, a machine gun that had a knife on it. So she stabbed the guy. So she jacks it out of his chest and she does the pirouette where you're just spinning in a circle. I think that's what it's called. And uh, is spraying bullets now to take out all these guys. Yeah. And even before she started ice skating, when the when the nine guys were walking slowly towards them, uh, with their knives, I leaned over to Dennis and said, at this point, I know you want to avoid 
stray bullets, but they're walking so slow. Sam Walk Rockwell and her could both just stand up and take these guys out without even using rapid fire because they're walking so slow. Now, granted, yeah. the guys would duck and stuff. So, yeah, you want to use rapid fire. But the point is, five minutes later, she's doing a full freaking spin, just letting bullets rip to take these guys out. Well, then yeah. why didn't you just spray them with bullets then? Right. right. So. And it's just like in other parts of the movie, they've got, uh, you know, Oh, we're killing everybody off, but we're gonna let Brian Cranston and and his wife, the doctor. Oh, we'll just knock them out. Full well knowing that they will get right back up. Well, and of course, right. The next scene, and they're like, "Well, why wouldn't you kill them when you know they're the most evil and they're gonna come after you?" Because plot armor, the movie ends and it's over. And it was just poorly explained. And then the very final one to get me was after this oil slick, they had planted all the C4 charges. They're driving away in their boat and the thing explodes. And it's an Exxon Valdez all over again in the middle of the ocean as all of this oil in this massive oil tanker goes up and explodes and basically pollutes the entire ocean. Not part of the novel. It just was. God, it started out so good. It did. And the problem with that CG is, and I, I, I think I said something to you as well. So yeah, they're, they're, they're tootling away from the oil tanker, uh, getting away the good guys win. And yeah, he sets it off and you see the big explosion. And at first the big explosion, it was pretty bad green screen CG for sure. But it was what most Hollywood explosions look like big, you know, mushroom cloud, a couple other areas of the ship, whatever. But what you don't generally see in an explosion, and I don't think I've ever seen before, was in the smoke going up, smaller explosions going off. And while they didn't shoot out like fireworks, that's the feeling you got was you, you see the big fireworks and then they shoot other ones up into those fireworks that go off, which is fine because they shoot them up. But this made no sense because yeah. it, it was just dumb. So. And there's, there's other things, you know, we're not going to spoil a ton of the movie. We're not going to really get into the twists and stuff that they put no, in it because there was, there were some that would good ruin twists. it. There were not some good twists, but you've got to, you've got to follow through with them to, to really pick up on, on the movie. Um, like I said, I feels like we're really complaining about this movie. It was fun. We did enjoy it. We, you know, we sat there and there was some open laughs in the in the crowd that saw it with us and stuff like that i think we just expected it to be better and more but thank right. you to sam rockwell for for holding this one together yeah definitely expect a little more but what you can expect from us next is guys core Drath, the awakening the much anticipated follow-up to core Drath, the reckoning is coming in april but first we've got the sign up page the link is in the description below you go here put in your email address and what will happen you'll know when the book launches like that because you'll get a notification and any updates leading up to the launch also you back the book after signing up you'll get a free adriana trading card that is right here look at that colored by the magnificent kelsey shannon You'll get that, and you'll also get hat tip to Graham Nolan for this idea, front of the line shipping, which means if Dennis were to sign up and back the book, when it comes to us fulfilling the campaign, we're going to pull those, those backers' names, and they will get shipped out first, within the first couple days. So you will get the book first. What else do we have? Well, we also debuted, uh, you saw a part of it there. Here is the full cover, the regular cover by me. And Dan Lawless is back to just splash his beautiful colors all over it. Uh, so you will get that as well. Uh, or you can get that, I should say. And of course, we're doing the homage cover. Uh, this one, the first book was a homage to Conan number one. And I tell you, Dennis and I look through different covers of Conan for a good homage for uh Volume two. And wouldn't you know it, Dennis? This is Conan number two's cover that we homaged. So look at that. 
right in line. So uh, great reaction from the homage covers. And uh, we had to definitely keep that, keep that tradition rolling along as well. So guys, go to the link, sign up, and be on the lookout for more cool updates and stuff. And of course, nice and tight, the comic book pencil art of Andy Smith. That's me, 64 pages and fantastic oversized. Uh, the book is oversized. Nice full pencils that were inked by other great artists. And uh, if it wasn't them or the editor, most of these hadn't been seen by the public. So go check this out. This campaign is set to deliver in May. I'll be closing it soon. We are $14 away from $8,000. $1,014 away from, I haven't really showed it much, the next stretch goal, which is a very nice spiral binding upgrade so you can lay the book perfectly flat, scan it easier. You know, if you don't get the digital version, you want to practice your inking with a spiral binding, you can put vellum over the page and practice your inking uh, skills as well. So go check that out as well. It'll be coming down soon. There is a digital version uh, to it and uh, the trading card that early backers or early sign up people that backed it are getting for free. I did put up for sale for four bucks. So you can just buy the trading card if you want or buy it and it will come with your uh, your book that you bought. So thank you very much. We will be back next Wednesday. Oh, real quick. What's tomorrow, Dennis? I almost forgot. Well, tomorrow, Andy, we're going to be at the Heroes Con at the Grady Cold Center in Charlotte. And uh, Frega Boom has graced us with our presence and is making the drive today to uh, to join us. So uh, anybody who's in the area, make plans. Come stop out and see us at the Grady Cole Center on Saturday. That's right. And we'll be back next Wednesday. Stay tuned for what we'll be doing. 3 p.m. Wednesday, we'll be back. Until then, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and share. Sign up for Core Draft back nice and tight. Have a great weekend. Nice and tight, the comic book pencil art of Andy Smith. That's me. This book features 52 pages of some of my favorite full pencils that I did for other companies over the past two decades. The raw pencils as they were seen by the inker and now you can see them for the first time. This book also comes in a digital format so you can practice your inking in your favorite program. Back it today.